In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one, and one in three. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my God. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word, praise to the Lord of my salvation, salvation is of Christ the Lord. I rejoice when I heard them say
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said all these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, Hainault Baptist Church. It's good to be with you today over this video medium. I actually come to you from my daughter's bedroom. She's not here, you'll be glad to know, but um, uh, my wife and I are both working from home. Um, my wife's in the office and, and I am in my daughter's bedroom where there is a second desk. I guess that's just the way that lockdown life is, isn't it? But it's good to join you. Um, even though you can probably just about glimpse the bed in the back corner there, but there we are. This morning, I'd like to talk about waiting. I guess for each one of us, we've um, felt like this past period of time has been a time of waiting. This third lockdown, we are, I guess, are waiting for it to, to end. I'm waiting to see my children. It's been some time since I've seen them as in the flesh, not just on a Zoom call. My wife and I, the other day, were talking about booking a holiday and kind of waiting to see what might happen and where we might do that within the UK. I guess some of you might be waiting for a vaccine. My parents and Dawn's parents now aren't. They both fortunately have had their vaccines or at least some of them, my dad's had both and the rest of the family have had at least one. So, but maybe you're waiting for a vaccine. Maybe you're waiting for the end of this whole thing just to, just to pass, uh, I don't know. I have to confess to you, I'm not particularly good at waiting. It is not something that comes naturally to me. As I've sort of said already, we as a nation have possibly felt like we've been waiting for about a year now. I guess it's been a very challenging time in all sorts of ways for, for all of us. And I, and I guess for many of us, it feels like life has been on pause. And the truth is, we don't actually know what's going to happen next, do we? We don't know what the next bit's going to look like and when life might get back to anything like normal. So here we find ourselves waiting. 2,000 years ago, we find a group of people who themselves were, were waiting. In one of the resurrection appearances of Jesus, he tells his followers to wait in the city. Now he's telling them to wait in the city of Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come. In Acts chapter 2, of course, we, we read the account of what happened. The followers of Jesus were waiting. We see them doing something that we don't do at the moment. The Bible talks about them meeting together in one place. And the Bible says that as they were meeting together in one place, as they were waiting, something miraculous happened. A sound like a rushing wind. Fire falls and people speak in a language not known to them. The Holy Spirit falls and a new era, a new normal, perhaps we could say, begins. I wonder, I wonder what Jesus' followers expected as they waited. I wonder if asked before that they would have described it in the way that it was, with wind and fire and tongues. The reality of the situation was that those people had their lives transformed forever, not because of those things, not because of the signs, but because of the encounter. The power of the Holy Spirit had become a reality for them. If we go back a little in the story of Jesus, we find in John 14, Jesus teaching his disciples about the Holy Spirit. And twice in John chapter 14, the NIV uses the word advocate. So in verse 16, we read, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. And then again in verse 26, but when the father sends the advocate, 
Now, if you were to read the amplified version of the Bible, you would actually find the word helper. However, followed by that word helper, excuse me, <coughs> you would find in brackets the word comforter, advocate, intercessor, counsellor, strengthener and standby. The Greek word used is parakletos, which literally means one called or sent to assist another. And in that sense, the Holy Spirit's function is to be God to all who believe. Now that includes you and me. It is for us just as if Jesus was in his incarnate state today. So the Holy Spirit's function is to be God to all who follow, just like it was when Jesus was on the earth. Now, now if we just begin to think about that for a moment, today we who have experienced the Holy Spirit, or we who, who can experience the Holy Spirit, it is like Jesus is actually with us. I just mentioned the Amplified Version of the Bible and those words to, um, to describe the word paraclete. And if we consider the teachings of Jesus about the Holy Spirit in John 14, we, we see a number of things described. Jesus says the Holy Spirit will, will teach them. He says the Holy Spirit will testify on behalf of himself. He says the Holy Spirit will convince the world of sin, righteousness and judgment. He says the Holy Spirit will, will guide the disciples in all truth. And he also tells them that the Holy Spirit will tell them about things to come. So if we think about that, we can possibly understand why the word paraclete can be translated in so many ways as, as advocate or helper or comforter or intercessor or counsellor or strengthener. You see, the truth is that none of these words alone truly describe all that the Holy Spirit can do in your life. <coughs> Today, we are a people of waiting. However, one thing we do not need to do is to wait for God. You see, the Holy Spirit can be a reality in your life Today, the power of the Holy Spirit is here for you this morning. <clears throat> it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in a church building or not. It doesn't matter if you're sat in a room on your own or with other people. His presence is with you today. It's the same as if Jesus was sat with you now. So, in this time of, of waiting, I would invite each one of us this morning again, or perhaps for some of us for the first time, to reach out, to reach out to the Holy Spirit and to ask him to come and be part of our lives. A simple prayer that each one of us can pray this morning is the prayer, Come Holy Spirit. Come as my advocate. Come as my helper. Come as my comforter. Come as my intercessor. Come as my counsellor. Come as my strengthener. Holy Spirit, come into my life. In this time of waiting, in this time of uncertainty that we all find ourselves we each can know the holy spirit for ourselves it can be for each one of us just as if jesus himself were sat with us it can be for each one of us just as if jesus himself were walking with each one of us so whatever you need today whatever it is that you need at this moment in time, in your life, in your circumstance, in your situation, you this morning can pray, come Holy Spirit. And as you do, the Holy Spirit will come into your life and be your advocate, your helper, 
your comforter, your intercessor, your counsellor and your strengthener because he, he can be all that you need. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. has no body now but yours no hands no feet on earth but yours yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world yours are the feet she wants to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are Spirit of enthusiasm, fill your church with a faith and a passion that will change the life of our world. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. Spirit of love, cast out all fear and where there is hatred between people of different races or colours, nations or tribes. Let there be love. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. Spirit of freedom, liberate those who are unjustly imprisoned or those who are captive to poverty or fear. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. Spirit of peace, let swords be beaten into plowshares and nations never again train for war. Let there be peace on earth. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. Spirit of power, overturn the values of our world that the weak and the voiceless may be empowered, 
the hungry fed, the powerful brought low and the humble lifted up. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. Spirit of comfort, give hope today to the despairing and the bereaved and the fearful and comfort those who are sick or in pain. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. Spirit of joy, turn people's tears into laughter and their frowns into smiles. Spirit of God, we wait upon you. And now as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of the watching ones, give us your benediction. God of the waiting ones, give us your good word for our souls. God of the watching, God of the waiting, God of the slow and the suffering, give us your benediction, your good word for our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.